Today, we're going to be talking about air estates with suspense. And uh, to do this, I've got a little demo here that fetches these three accounts. Now we can see over here in the home page, we're rendering these three stat components and each one takes in an endpoint. And if we pop open the stat, we'll see we're using SWR to fetch the data. We can also see that we're handling the loading and air estates right here. So if I were to come over to my mock server and just grab one of these endpoints and uh, force an error response, we'll see that the stack component shows an error right here, uh, but the other two render just fine. Now, sometimes this is exactly what you want in an app, uh, but other times the error might be so critical that you never wanna paint this picture. You never wanna show the user an incomplete screen of their data. So let's say our product manager comes and says, if one of these errors, we don't wanna show any of them, we just wanna show a single error message. Well, right now, the error is deep down here in each stack component. So it's not really clear how we might do that. Well, this is where Suspense really helps us out. So let's go ahead and refactor this code to uh, use Suspense, and then we can see how we can solve this problem. I'll come here to use SWR and we'll pass in Suspense true. And this is actually going to crash our app because now we need a Suspense boundary around these components. So back on the home page, I'll grab each stat and let's just go ahead and wrap it with a suspense component. And for each one of these, we'll add a fallback of our spinner. Now, if we come and reload the app, we'll see we have our loading behavior back, no error, everything's good. But what if we come here and force this API endpoint to error again? We're actually gonna see another crash and this is because of how suspense treats errors. So we don't handle errors in the component. We actually do exactly the same thing and come to our parent and add an error boundary. So I'll grab these three suspense components and wrap them in error boundary. This error boundary happens to be coming from the React error boundary library, but you can use any error boundary you like. And uh, this guy also takes in a fallback, which we'll just use to render our error component with a message of could not fetch data. So now if we come back and refresh, we see our error message showing again and the app is behaving exactly as it was before. To finish this refactor, we can come to our stack component. We don't need this error message and uh, we just don't need to handle error or loading states at all in this component, which is a great benefit of suspense. Okay, so we're back to the original behavior. Let's see how easy it is to make our product manager happy. We'll come down grab these two error boundaries, go ahead and remove them. And I'm just gonna come up here, move this error boundary above the div, move this below it, and check it out. We have a single error message as soon as any of these data fetching components error, and now we're not rendering any incomplete view of this data. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty powerful win right off the bat here, but we're not done yet. Let me come over to the mock server. And instead of erring here on checking, Let's go ahead and make the savings endpoint show an error. Now, if I click this and reload, we see the app is kind of feels broken again. And that's actually because the saving endpoint takes a little bit longer. And so we see the other data, but then all of a sudden our error message shows. So how might we fix this? Well, amazingly, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna remove these two uh, nested suspense boundaries, and I'm just going to move this boundary out above all three cards. Now let's give it a refresh and check it out. We have a single loading spinner here that stays until we know the result of all three cards. And as soon as the savings endpoint errors, we see the single error message. So now we kind of have just one paint of the screen once we know. And if we were to put the server back into a good state, we have kind of this single loading spinner and then all three cards render. So uh, this is really the meat of how loading and errors work with suspense. Suspense lets us use error boundaries, which we've already seen, lets us very easily change our UI. Uh, they are just components and they compose just as well as any other React component. So we were able to change the complete behavior of this UI without changing anything about the stat component. The stat component is still fetching its own data. We could even add more components deeper down that do their own uh, data fetching. And uh, this is just a huge benefit with this architecture. Um, 
whenever you use a data fetching library without suspense, whether you're using you know React Query, SWR, or you're just writing your own effects uh, with use effect, pre-suspense, you weren't able to do this because there's no way to easily communicate from a child component that fetches data to a parent that there was an error. And you also weren't able to use error boundaries because error boundaries only capture errors that happen during render. And whenever you're using data fetching that runs in an effect, well, effects happen after render. So again, whether you're using SWR or writing your own use effect code, any error that happened with an asynchronous call like a fetch request was happening after, after render. So the component would render and uh, then you'd have an error and you'd have to do this whole set state and re-render song and dance and there's no way to tell your parent that you had an error. So suspense solves all of this while giving us a more flexible DX. It turns errors that happen asynchronously uh, with suspense into render time errors. So this component is never gonna make it past this line of code. It's never gonna execute any of this or anything that comes after. When a fetch throws and uh, the component is suspending, then uh, it becomes a render time error. And uh, we have no defensive code here and we get to handle it up here. So uh, I thought this was a really cool demonstration of um, how to use error boundaries with suspense. You can wrap each one of these in its own error if you wanted to render an incomplete set, uh, kind of like a robust or resilient UI. You know, Netflix does this a lot. If they have a bookshelf that doesn't load your recommendations, they still wanna show the new releases. You can do that just by wrapping individual data loaded components with an error boundary. Or if we have a situation like this where we never want to show an incomplete picture of our data, we just want one at the root. So uh, that is how uh, error boundaries work with suspense. There's a lot of folks asking in my last video or two videos ago about how it would work if one of these things failed. So if you've never used suspense before, check out my last two videos because they kind of cover building this. And uh, that's what I wanted to share with you today. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments. If you made it this far, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.